Hello friends, welcome into NFL Daily presented by BetDSI, the internet's number one sportsbook. I am your host Tom Downey here with another look at the latest head coaching candidates for an NFL team. This time we have the Arizona Cardinals. It seems like Steve Wilk is going to be a one and done head coach in Arizona. The report from ESPN is that, well I guess they use the term parting ways, read between the lines, they're going to fire Steve Wilkes. That would make Wilkes the rare one and done as a head coach. And I am of the belief that if your head coach is one and done, maybe you should fire your front office as well because clearly they did not get the hire right. So the drama around the front office could drastically change this list. So keep that in mind. We'll update as we see fit throughout the year. But first off, should the Cardinals fire Steve Wilkes? Type Y for yes. Type N for no. Let me know in the comments section. I didn't love the Steve Wilkes hire. I think that's been backed up by what we've seen so far this year. He just looks a little bit outmatched as the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. So we'll take you through the top 10 candidates for the Arizona Cardinals. Number 10, more of a name just to monitor here. James Betcher, who was in the mix last time. That's kind of the common theme among these bottom of the 10, 10 options here. Interview for the Cardinals job last year. Bruce Arians liked him quite a bit, said maybe he should get the, get the gig. Didn't end up happening. He's now the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants, although the Giants have all kinds of issues beyond any coaching staff problems there. So I don't think he's a likely, out, uh, likely candidate. I think he is more of a long shot, but I do want to make note of him because Arians loved him and he did an interview for the job last year. Also in a man who interviewed for the job last year and has, has had his stock plummet this year is John D. Flippo. Flip. I thought would have made a lot of sense for the Cardinals. I liked him a lot when he was the Eagles quarterback coach. This year, though, his stock has plummeted, was fired as the Vikings OC. Now all of a sudden the ground game works again. But I'll make note now. I think he's launched. I doubt he'll get, I, I doubt he'll get hired. Do not be surprised if he gets interviews, at least for his coaching jobs, if not in, obviously OC slash quarterback gigs as well. I will not be surprised. Yes, his stock took a huge hit. But NFL teams interviewed him last year as a quarterback's coach. That's typically a sign that teams like you, even with the bad run in Minnesota, don't be surprised if he gets interviewed, although I kind of doubt he gets hired at this point. All right, number eight, Brian Flores, a runner-up for the Cardinals job last year. Again, sticking with that theme of people who interviewed last year. And, by the way, even though he's not really the D.C. at New England, he is because he's calling the defensive plays, just doesn't have the title, much like Chris Richard for the Dallas Cowboys. My concern here. Would the Cardinals hire another defensive mind? I don't know if they would. Now, the buzz is he could have hired Jim Caldwell as, an, as the OC, and there's been some buzz about Caldwell getting a head coach job, which I guess he could be a fit for Arizona, but that would be a pretty, pretty underwhelming hire. Flores makes some sense, but he's only number eight because even though he's an up-and-coming guy, I don't know if they want to go with another defensive mind, which, which we'll talk more about later on with some other candidates. One more guy I consider kind of a long shot, but there's been a little bit of buzz around him that I've heard. Todd Bowles, which you would be my response. I know the Cardinals front office likes him a lot. He was their DC, and there was a report from NFL.com that, seriously, that NFL teams could have interest in Bowles as a head coach candidate because, frankly, the coordinator crop is not that good this year. Don't forget that if you see retreads end up getting hired this year around the NFL and the coaching carousel. So I know the Cardinals' current front office thinks highly of him, but he wasn't very good as the Jets' head coach. He is going to be fired on Black Monday slash Sunday night. I would be stunned if he wasn't. So I don't think you'll see Todd Bowles hanging around anymore as a Jets' head coach, but maybe Arizona wants to bring him back. I think he makes a lot more sense. Go hire an offensive mind and then bring in Todd Bowles as your DC. That would be a great hire for Arizona or any number of programs or any number of NFL teams out there. All right, folks, today's show is brought to you by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sports book. Use promo code LIVE120 when you set up a deposit to get a 120% deposit bonus. What that means is put down 50 bucks, they're going to give you 64 free to bet with, and then go DM us on Twitter at ChatSports Get you guys hooked up with an NFL jersey. So again, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code LIVE120, gets you a 120% deposit bonus and an NFL jersey once you DM us on Twitter at chatsports. It is the best deal out there. And a nice recovery if you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas this year. All right, number six, Freddie Kitchens. And this is a recently 
trending upward candidate here, has done a very good job as the Browns' offensive coordinator, coached the car in Arizona under Bruce Arians for 10 years, 2007 to 2017, and he's now drawing some buzz around the NFL as an NFL head coach option. I think Freddie Kitchens could make a lot of sense for the Cardinals. If you want to build around Josh Rhodes, which is the number one thing for Arizona right now, I think Kitchens makes sense. I think when we go back and redo some of our older head coaching candidate list, he's going to make it for quite a few, especially that Browns gig. All right, number five, Eric Bieniemy in his first year as the Chiefs offensive coordinator. Take note, he doesn't call the plays. And I think that's important. If you're looking at a guy like Kitchens or Bieniemy, doesn't play calling kind of matter here? Yeah, both have had immense success, but I think it's fair to credit Kitchens with more credit than Bieniemy in the Chiefs and the Browns, respectively. Now, the Andy Reid coaching tree has had plenty of success, and that is a big, big factor on that end. I think that's key for teams that want to find the next bright offensive mind. The big question here, and this is the number one thing for Arizona across the board, can you help your franchise quarterback in Josh Rosen? Hasn't had much help this year. The offensive line has been a complete disaster, which is not good for a pocket passing quarterback. So I'll ask you, what type of coach should Arizona hire? Type O for offense or type D for defense? Let me know in the comment section. Obviously the correct answer is the best coach. That's a given. But if you could choose, do you want offensive or defensive minded me? Give me the offensive guy. Because if you have a bright young OC, he's typically gonna get poached. I'd like to have a top down effect there for your offense from the head coach. All right, number four, Pete Carmichael, the offensive coordinator for the Saints. And it's, it's funny to me, right? You, you, you get the Sean McVay, the Kyle Shanahan, the Andy Reid coaching tree of constantly getting their OCs plucked away. The Saints, though, and Sean Payton, I think the best offensive mind in the NFL, and maybe Sean McVay's in that mix too, <laughs> doesn't get his OC plucked. That's funny, right? How, do, how that works out. Now, he's 47 years old, waiting to make that jump to the head coaching level. Dan Campbell, by the way, also an option on the Saints coaching staff. But if and when Pete Carmichael wants to make that jump to the NFL and be a head coach, or an NFL head coach, I should say, maybe the Cardinals make sense. Maybe he's learned enough from, from Sean Payton to get the most out of Josh Rosen. So Pete Carmichael at number four. I'll verbally mention Dan Campbell here as an option as well. I think all those guys make some sense. All right, number three, Matt LaFleur. And look, I know everyone likes him. There's been a lot of buzz around the floor as Oh, he comes from the McVay and the Shanahan coaching tree. He's a bright, young offensive mind. But here's the thing. I know there are other reasons why beyond just the play calling in Tennessee, but that offense hasn't actually been very good this year. It's been a bottom 10 offense all year long. And I know Mariota's been banged up and is hurt right now. They finally got Derrick Henry involved, and good things have happened there. And the offensive line has had some issues too. But the play calling, I have long thought it was the coaching in Tennessee. Maybe it's the players, but... The offense has not been as good as I thought it was going to be. And I know everyone likes LaFleur, and I do too, but I think the hype train is getting a little bit out of control around him, but he is going to draw interest this year. All right, number two, Josh McDaniels, who has burned some bridges without a doubt there. Backed out of the Colts job during last offseason after agreeing to it. Hired some coaches, one of them, Matt Eberflus, who's going to get some buzz as well around other jobs as the Colts DC right now. But that move burned some bridges. Here's the thing, though. There have been reports that other coaches still want to join up with McDaniels as a head coach candidate. And I think the Cardinals, from that perspective, maybe they make some sense, especially if the front office changes. The current regime, I don't think so. But what happens, let's say, Steve Kime gets forced out of Arizona. They bring in a whole new front office, and they bring in a Nick Cesario from the Patriots or a Louis Riddick from ESPN, both guys that McDaniels knows and trusts. Maybe in that scenario, you get your GM that knows McDaniels and you bring in McDaniels as your next head coach. I think it's an option. Maybe the Packers make more sense in the end, but I think McDaniels didn't quite burn the British Valley as I thought he had when he bailed on the Colts job. But then again, he doesn't want to leave New England for any gig either. All right, folks, if you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas this year, how about you go pick yourself up a Mizzen and Main Street as a consolation prize, and it is a damn good consolation prize. Comfortable.af is the site. They make the best damn shirts out there. These are so comfortable, I tend to sleep in them often after a night of drinking. But anyway, they're still really comfortable. Mizzen and Main, go check them out. Comfortable.af. All right, folks, then at number one, a very common theme. I actually feel bad about putting him at number one so often. It's Mike McCarthy. And... We'll get some more clarification on where McCarthy will end up going, but Peter King reports that 
He has interest in the Cardinals job. Maybe he wants to work with Josh Rosen. So the interest there, the only actual true guarantee we know for now about Arizona, puts him at number one, although I'm sure there's other interests we just haven't quite heard about yet. Now, the Packers, ironically enough, fired him after a loss to the Arizona Cardinals. Cost McCarthy his job, appears not to be enough to save Steve Wilkes' job. And I know that he kind of fell apart near the end of his tenure in, in Green Bay, but to go from Steve Wilkes to Mike McCarthy, that's an upgrade, I think. Now, McCarthy needs to adjust some of his stuff there, but I think in Arizona he'd be a good fit, less pressure, I think, as well. And look, you don't have that success in the NFL if you're a fluke. So maybe McCarthy has to adjust some stuff to avoid the game having passed him by, but I think he'd be a good hire for Arizona. All right, folks, to recap my top 10 Cardinals head coaching candidates, number 10, James Betcher. Number 9, John D. Flippo. Number 8, Brian Flores. Guys I interviewed last year that I don't think are going to be legit options, but I want to make note of them anyway. At least not the favorite options, I should say. Todd Bowles. I know Arizona likes him, but that would kind of be a gross hire. Freddie Kitchens. Watch out for him. He's rapidly gaining some buzz around the NFL for head coaching gigs. And then some more offensive minds. Notice the common theme there. Top six guys, all offense. You have got to focus on Josh Rosen if you are the Arizona Cardinals. So Eric Bieniemy, Pete Carmichael, Carmichael, a lesser name, but I think we'll get some buzz this year. Matt LaFleur, Josh McDaniels, and then Mike McCarthy at number one. Of course, we'll update this and once Wilkes finally gets fired, and then once we get some more buzz around these guys, we'll do it for all of our head coaching candidate lists. But in the meantime, who do you want Arizona to hire as their next head coach? Let me know in the comments section. I'll come back and respond with my thoughts. Feel free, by the way, to go off the list of guys I mentioned. There are more than just 10 guys I think you'll hear connected to the Arizona Cardinals coaching job, especially if a new GM does come in and changes everything in that organization.